Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand NAND based flash memories. Okay, let's get started here. In the previous clip, we have already seen NOR based flash memories in which we saw erase programming and read operation. And we also saw for a particular operation, we used fallen northern tunneling and for the other operation, we used hot electron effect or channel hot electron injection. Let's understand the NAND based flash memories. Let's just change fallen northern tunneling understanding in the sense that we have seen that when we wanted to erase something using the fallen northern tunneling, we gave a very high voltage at the drain and zero voltage at the gate. Whereas we wanted to program something, we gave a very high voltage at the gate and low voltage or a zero voltage at the drain so that the charge can be trapped and the threshold voltage can be increased. Here, we also saw that there was a thin oxide compared to hot electron effect. It was a very, very thin oxide which led to the tunneling of electrons. All this we have covered in the basic clips. Here, this is my polygate one, polygate two. I have kept the shape as original and I have not made it focusing towards the drain as we would see why. Same is the case here. Diagram is not intimidating at all. I have tried to fabricate an NMOS. Just see what I have done. There is a P substrate on which I got an N well. We have to make the N well connection and we know that N well connection will be made through this contact. Then I made my P well. In P well I can make the fabrication of my NMOS. So N type diffusion. One is drain. This one is drain. This one is source. This is the contact for the body and this is the contact of the substrate for my N well. So for programming, we will follow a similar phenomena like what we had studied in the previous clip. We know that a high voltage is applied at the gate. Say I am applying a high voltage at the gate which is approximately equal to 20 volts. We know that this is a drain. Drain should be grounded. So this will be grounded. Source, there is no need. We can keep it floating. Correct? And this well contact, technically, for an NMOS, the body goes to ground, so this has to be zero, correct? And for a PMOS, which is fabricated on the N well, the N type goes to VDD, but here we'll make both of them go towards ground. We'll quickly understand what will happen if we give this to a higher voltage. So this will be my connection, very simple. When a high voltage is applied at its gate, we have already seen this. What's going to happen is the charge will get trapped on poly one. The drain is at zero because of the thin oxide and because of this electric field there will be a charge which will be present here and now you will take a higher threshold voltage to turn on this transistor. So drain is zero, gate is at a higher volt, source is floating and both P well and N well contacts are made to ground. Now I want to, when I want to erase what we have already seen in the previous clip is we make our gate voltage zero and we keep on increasing our drain voltage to a very high value. So gate voltage is zero is the same. But here because I am using my P-well and N-well contacts, I am not going to get my drain voltage to a higher value. Rather, I will keep my drain voltage also floating. And I will make my source also floating. And my N connection and P connection of my respective wells, I will connect to a very high voltage, say approximately equal to 20 volts. So what's going to happen is the electrons which are trapped here now what would happen because of the higher voltage of 20 volts present on the P type this electrons will start moving towards there and the charge which was present on the poly 2 I beg your pardon poly 1 in this case it will be lost and I will get back my original threshold voltage or in good sense it means that I have erased the content correct so the only change from what we have seen previously is that here I am not going to make my drain voltage go to a higher value. Rather what I am going to do is I am going to use the contacts of my P well and N well and give it a higher value and I will keep my drain floating. This is going to be very important when we study NAND blaze flash memories. So with this I think we are all set to understand the reading, writing and programming of a NAND. Let's understand a 4-bit NAND flash memory. Before we go ahead, we know that NAND is nothing but transistors connected in series, correct? 
Now you will have floating gates. So this will be the four transistors, correct? Where this will be word lines, which will be given to its gate. And we have to do some provision for this N type connection, this P type connection, and this drain and source, correct? Of the floating gate because there are four transistors. So we will need two additional transistors. The one terminal of that transistor would be the drain. The other terminal of that transistor will be using as a source. Let me explain it to you what I mean. Basically, this is your N plus, this is your P well, correct? This is your N plus, this is your N plus, and this was your poly one, this was your poly two, or whatever name you want to call it. Now, what's going to happen is you want to give this connections either floating, zero, VDD, or higher voltage, etc. Same is the case here. But now these are the four transistors connected in series. So for this terminal and this terminal, you will need two additional transistors. So this is transistor one, which operates at normal voltage. Let's say select transistor top on the transistor at the bottom, select transistor bottom. This is going to be your drain terminal, which is this drain. And this is going to be your source terminal, which is this source. Correct. Like this, you can have a lot of columns of the same thing can be replicated and you can have columns of NAND based flash memory cells. Now also we know that we need to have connections for N, well, N plus and P plus. So let's make that also. So this is N plus line. There's a P plus line and we'll see how to make this different different connections for different different operations like read, programming and erase. So this is the diagram. I'm just going to translate this diagram back here. So same select top, select bottom, the four NAND gates the floating gates and these are my normal transistors. This is my drain, which I can see here. This is my source terminal. This is the select top, select bottom to make connections to the drain and source. This is my P plus and this is my N plus. And this drain is connected to bit line. Similarly, we can have different cells here as well. So let's start with the erase operation. Erase operation, pay attention here. Before we do that, let's see which cell we want to erase. So we are focusing our attention on this particular cell in this particular column. So for erase, we know that the gate voltage has to go to zero. So WL3 goes to zero. We also know that in flash memories, it is a global erase, correct? Remember that. So all the different word lines are all going to be zeros. We saw this in case of NOR based flash also. Now we want your drain to be floating. So drain is connected to the bit line. It has to be floating or open. So that's done. So this drain is floating. It has no impact in the erase operation. That means you don't want your transistor to be on. So select top can also be given a zero volt. Great. Source. Look at erase. Source is also floating. That means this line is also floating and you don't want that to have an impact. That means you can turn off this as well. So select bottom with zero. Source line is zero. And very important for the erase operation, you want your NNP both to be given 20 volt or a higher value. So once you give this, what's going to happen is all these four transistors, floating gate transistors, which were, let's suppose, initially programmed for a higher threshold voltage to turn on through fallen northern tunneling. Now all that charges which were present in their poly have been lost and they go back to their original state or they go back to a state where they can turn on or where they can be turned on with a normal threshold voltage. So I've erased the content of all these cells. Let's understand the programming of this now. So for programming, pay attention here. I'm interested in programming this particular transistor. So for programming, we know that the gate voltage should go to 20 volts. So WL3 should go to 20 volts. Everyone agrees to that. So all the other W's, you can have something which is a lower value at the gate, say somewhere around 5 to 10 volts. Anyways, they are not very critical to us because we are not looking to program them. Correct. So some lower value. Our concern is this. And that's where I made for programming. The gate voltage should be very high. The drain voltage is grounded. That means the bit line, the drain is grounded is zero and we want its effect to come into the picture. So we'll have to turn on this transistor through a select line, which will be nothing but VDD. Correct. So this is VDD. Source line is floating. This is floating or open. So select bottom transistor is not critical to us. So we can keep it to zero. And for programming, we know that N plus and P plus both are connected to zero. 
So we'll just quickly put that as well. Now when we do this, the high gate voltage is applied only on WL3, which means that now it will keep on attracting electrons to its floating gate and it will accumulate the charge on the floating gate, which will make, make it a high threshold voltage transistor, correct? And then we know that once this has become high, it will take even if you apply VTH equal to 5 volts, presuming VDD is 5 volts, it will not turn on. That means you have programmed this particular cell or this particular transistor in that column. All other transistors have word line very, slow, very low, so that will not lead to the accumulation of charge on their poly, floating poly, I mean. Okay, let's finally go ahead and do the read operation here. So for the read operation, what we are going to do is we are going to turn on all our transistors except for the transistor which is into consideration. So WL3 will keep it to zero. Rest all would be VDD. In this case, say VDD is five volts. So select top would be five volts. That means this transistor is on. I want this also to be on. Select bottom as five volts, correct? And I want all the word lines also to be high. We'll understand what we are doing. So all these are five volts. I'll give some value at the bit line, say one volt. Correct, and I'll make my source line to zero. And in this case, I'll put my P source and N plus also to zero. Now, see what happens is bit line is at one volt, all these transistors have been given five volts. Correct, and this transistor is given a zero volt. Suppose this was a high transistor, correct? High transistor means it was programmed in such a way that it will not turn on when the threshold voltage is applied at its gate. Correct? We have seen that. So if it's a high transistor, when a zero is applied, it does not turn on. However, if it's a low transistor, in this case, when we assume that it's a low transistor, it means that it can turn on when a zero is applied at its gate. We have decreased its threshold voltage to that value that it can turn on when a zero is applied at its gate. So when a zero is applied and if this transistor turns on, correct? And all these are on right now, presuming they are also on. So let's understand this simple. Let's do this simply again. Let's take one or two cases. Suppose this is a high transistor, correct? If it's a high transistor, that means when you apply a zero volts at its gate, which we have done here, it does not turn on, correct? And if it does not turn on, that means there is no direct path from drain to source, correct? This is one volt and this is zero. There has to be some path but there is no path. If it's a low transistor, correct? If it's a low transistor, low transistor means it can turn on with a normal threshold voltage, but here we have programmed it in such a way before that the transistor can turn on when a input zero is applied, means your threshold voltage is below that. It will turn on, correct, with an input low. If it's a low threshold transistor, it will turn on with an input zero because we have programmed it previously that way. That means this transistor is on and there will be a path for the current to flow from drain to source. That means the bit line which was pre-charged has a current path towards ground and this will tell us that there was a low transistor present there or there was a zero or if it is a high transistor and there is no direct path, it will tell us that it was a one. So this is how you read into a NAND based flash memory. So we have seen that NAND based flash memories use fallen northern tunneling for both its programming and erasing method. And in the next clip we will do the comparison between NOR based and NAND based. I hope you have followed. Stay tuned and thank you very much.